Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, we're coming up on the hill here to make a little bitty short video on wheat sowing. Uh, and look, I don't know if you can make them out in the field up there, but uh, my little friends the crows are here and they are in that soybean residue picking up soybeans and it's freshly tilled ground. I'm sure they're picking up bugs. But uh, right here to the west of this hill, there's probably, I don't know, a couple hundred acres of contiguous forest uh, right off the river valley. So it's excellent habitat. And uh, one thing we do have here is we have a very healthy, I don't know what you call the group, but uh, we have a very healthy group of crows out here working in the residue field. And they know it's me, so they're not in a big hurry to go away, but they they don't hang around right next to the tractor, not like some of the other birds we have do. Okay guys, so we're making a little video on sowing wheat. Uh, we're in a soybean residue field. Uh, this field I dissed one time, and hopefully by looking up ahead there you can see a little bit of the contrast. Uh, at the end of October, the ground is relatively mellow. Uh, we do have plenty of moisture here. Moisture's not a problem. Uh, but what I was talking about in the disking videos of doing one pass and doing it fast, uh, first of all, I want to leave a lot of residue on the soil surface. Uh, obviously, this is hill ground and we're planting terraces on the contour. But I want to leave a lot of residue on the surface. So one of the things that ties to leave a lot of residue on my soybean combine, I do not run my straw chopper. Uh, I put on my rear spreaders, and I leave my soybean stems intact. Uh, if you look over there just to the left of here, where I've been before, you can see full length soybean stems. I like to leave them intact for the residue. Uh, if you were to get the uh, residue calculator and cover the ground, you know, the string line with the beads on it, so you do a residue test, you'd be somewhere uh, on this particular terrace where the beans did not do quite as good. You'd probably be in that 20 to 25 percent range. Uh, on the top of the hill where the beans were quite a bit better, you would be in the close to 40% range of residue cover. Uh, the other thing is keeping something growing in the soil. So anytime I plant wheat, or anytime I plant soybeans or forage sorghum them on these hills, I always come back with wheat. I want to keep a living root in this soil. I want to keep the soil alive and biologically active. Uh, on this field, in certain poor spots, uh, after 20 years of farming this ground, I know where the poor spots are. So yesterday we did come and we did spread manure on the poor spots. Uh, this terrace right here got one pass right up the center of the terrace. Uh, the reason it's poor there is because for years in the old days, in Dad's time, they used to plow the terrace and you would come to a double back furrow in the middle of the terrace. You were plowing your topsoil up to push up the terrace and down to push up the terrace. But you would have two back furrows come together in the middle of the terrace. The middle of the terrace was always the poorest soil. And we did run manure up the middle of this terrace. But anyway, I love the way in this soybean ground you can do one pass with the disc and uh, it looks pretty rough, but the drill comes along. That's a press wheel drill and it's got the wide tires on it. I think they're the four inch tires. But it presses it down and smooths it out real nice. Last thing I wanted to say, a little bit about wheat. So, uh, if Deborah would look over to the right there into the valley, uh, you can see some of our early wheat way down there in the bottom. That car's driving by. Cross that road and go another quarter mile east. 
and you can see some of our early wheat. So it's very important. I mix wheats. So I do plant wheat early behind red clover. Uh, that wheat typically does not yield the best, but it gives you crazy high protein numbers. You can take the early wheat with the high protein numbers and you can mix it with this soybean wheat that we're planting today, a uh, full month later, and following soybeans. The soybean wheat will typically give you uh, the highest yield. It will give you very high test weight, but it will not necessarily give you high protein. Over the years, uh, probably only twice in my life, have I got soybean wheat to go over 12% protein. But the early wheat, you can push those proteins up crazy high into the proteins, and some years I've gone over 14 and a half on early wheat, planted the first of October following clover. But anyway, that's a little bit about wheat culture in Kansas. Thanks.